Looking for an affordable electric vehicle to get around Seattle, no fuss, no muss? I'm Tom Volk for the Seattle International Auto Show, and the Fiat 500e is loads of fun and will score you parking spots that other cars will have to pass up. The second generation 500e is bigger and better with personality that would overflow the Coliseum. Its range is EPA rated at 149 miles, low for some, perfectly fine for others, because the Cinquecento is a city car. This is its natural habitat. Behind its happy face, there's seating for four. <laughs> More on that later. Normally the automakers give us loaded cars to test. This is a base model, and with shipping goes for just over $34,000. If you're buying, it does not qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit, but it does if you're leasing. Ironically, this inspired model, get it, comes in a choice of paint colors, white, black, and of course, red, while the more expensive inspired by beauty is only in rose gold, inspired by music, just black. The single option on any of them is summer performance tires. Fiat says they only come one way and implies all versions will be special editions of sorts. Smitten with a color or trim? Don't wait to pull the trigger. It may not stick around long. Bono, uh, yeah, that Bono will be happy if you buy this one. Money generated by red goes to the Global Fund, which helps to end deadly pandemics. 500e has been slipping into tight parking spaces in Europe for two years now, so any kinks should be ironed out. Its closest competitors are the Mini Cooper SE and Volvo's upcoming EX30. Time for another edition of Frunk or No Frunk. Any bets? No Frunk. And that uh, looks like there's a little bit of room. There's no doubt 500E is built in the land of pizza and tiramisu. What a sweet bunch of Easter eggs. The bay has hints of hot dog and apple pie. There's no engine oil to check. A prop rod could have saved some money, no? Here's what moves the 500E. The 17-inch front wheels are turned by a permanent magnetic motor making 117 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque to move 3,000 pounds of car. All-wheel drive is not a thing. Batteries are included. The U.S. only gets the larger 42 kilowatt hour pack. Its max charge rate is 85 kilowatts. The ignition startup tone is as cute as the car. Shutdown, serious jeopardy. Boom, boom. Yeah, it's close. 500E is straightforward. For a fun car, it has a small cluster that's all business. The transmission is single speed, love the big buttons. There are three drive modes. Range adds regeneration drag. Sherpa is for squeezing out maximum range, partly by capping speed at 50 miles an hour. 500E doesn't have the performance of a Porsche Taycan Turbo. It'll dart to 60 miles an hour in about eight and a half seconds. But it is an electric vehicle with lots of low-end torque, so it feels kind of punchy off the line. Neighbors will know exactly when you hit 20 miles an hour because at that point, the 500E belts out a little tune. Not sure if you can hear this. They might think the ice cream truck is coming. It doesn't deliver espresso shot jolts if acceleration like that is important, but it feels perky at city speeds, always ready for a good time and would keep teens out of trouble. Top speed is 94 miles an hour. Driving dynamics, uh, the 500E is Miata grade fun. Remember, heavy batteries in the floor, a low center of gravity. It's fun to chuck in the corners. The suspension is firm, but never uncomfortable. That means body motions are well controlled and the steering weight is about perfect. Even a little bit of road feel. 
The short wheelbase means choppy pavement can cause some bucking at certain speeds, and while the 500 is considered a city car, highway driving at 75 miles an hour shouldn't stress anyone out. It's even moderately quiet. Range and charge speed might keep this from long distance travel. Comfort shouldn't. From behind the wheel, this never feels like a tiny clown car. Uh, the vibe is actually surprisingly spacious and the seating position is high enough so that you won't feel intimidated in heavy traffic. On tight urban streets, it's more relaxing to drive a compact car, no worrying about shearing the side view mirrors off. It scores parking spots that Honda Civics have to pass up. It's the ultimate grocery getter, meant as a compliment. And you won't see this EV coming and going. It has personality. Did I mention it's nimble? Do U-turns all the time? Watch this. absolutely brilliant. That's a pretty standard two-lane road, around 32 feet wide. No sweat. The average range is rated at 149 miles, and in mixed driving with temperatures in the mid-50s, low 60s, I'm pretty much nailing that. Now, on the highway, you're probably going to lose 30 miles when you're traveling over 70 miles an hour, but you know, this is a city car. That's its mission, and it does it really well. All the information for making good decisions is front and center, nothing complicated. Playing with the modes gives drivers an idea how much range can be added or subtracted. They can't be customized, though. In normal mode, this drives and brakes like a regular car. Throw it into range mode, that adds a lot more recuperation drag, so... There is a one pedal driving dynamic if you want it. My foot was never on the brake, it came to a complete stop. Also, the dynamic of the brake pedal going from recuperation to the hydraulic brakes is pretty much seamless. EVs aren't for everyone just yet. The best experience requires charging where you sleep this can be DC fast charged, but a top speed of 85 kilowatts means it would take 35 minutes to hit 80% charge on a spent pack. Fiat throws in a free home charger or $600 worth of charge credit on the free to move network. Using 240 volt level two charging, the 500E will juice up from five to 100% in about six hours. Using 120, it's closer to 37. But here's the thing, those who only travel 30 to 40 miles a day, that will work for them because one, it eliminates the expense of installing level two charging. And second of all, you can always go to a DC fast charger if you need a quick battery top off. Things are clean and simple inside. Kudos to Fiat engineers for carving out space in the small car. Little details too. The more expensive, inspired by models, get a textured panel here, plus heated seats with synthetic leather. Adjustment is manual. Cushions are firm, in a good way. The cloth is breathable and advertises the brand. Looking for the door release? If the power goes out, here's a backup. Sadly, no sunroof is available, at least for now. I've driven significantly larger cars with fewer storage spaces. Helped by a flat floor, a good amount of stuff stashes away in here. Umbrella pockets. Uh, ironically, we don't use those in Seattle. It's a pride thing. The only cup holder is here. Quite a reach for your cappuccino. Being a Stellantis product, there's the latest Uconnect user interface. The 10 and a quarter inch screen is also found in Alfa Romeo's Tonale. This is a solid system overall with good response. All 500Es get auto climate. Notice there are physical buttons. Thanks, Fiat. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless. Use apps to find charging stations in a pinch. A phone charge pad is standard across the board.
It shouldn't be any surprise that room is kind of tight back here. It's a small car. I'm five foot nine and I have like a finger's worth of headroom. The cushions are low and short, so thigh support isn't all that great. But I am surprised that there's adequate knee, leg, and foot room for my 32-inch inseam. There's some storage under here, room for a travel charge cord. Even with 17-inch wheels, there's no room for a spare, just a repair kit. Dropping the seats is a cinch. Um, it sure would be useful if the front passenger seat folded flat to carry really long things. Seats up, it's seven and a half cubic feet of cargo space. It's a small car, that should be expected. At $34,000, as tested, some larger EVs can be had for just a little bit more money. That's kind of missing the point of the 500E. The small size is a big part of the appeal. You know, the right tool for the job. At the end of the day, buy the vehicle that's right for your needs. Now, getting one means going to the Fiat USA website. Chances are you'll be picking it up at a Chrysler, Dodge, or Alfa Romeo showroom. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Polk.